Rescuers are searching for survivors in the Ukrainian city of Slovyansk after at least eight people, including a toddler, were killed in Russian airstrikes. The latest attack came as Russian President Vladimir Putin signed into law a bill that will allow him to draft citizens into the military via email. Slovyansk is just 50 kilometers from Bakhmut, which has witnessed some of the heaviest fighting on the front line in recent months. Trapped within the rubble, in a residential area devastated by Russian shelling, rescuers search this apartment block for survivors, bringing those who they can find to safety. Some residents were in obvious distress after their neighborhood was reduced to rubble. <laughs> Local officials said at least seven spots in Slovyansk were targeted, including homes and civilian infrastructure. I was just coming back home. Everything should have been all right. I had just left a shop. There was the post office, and just beyond it, there was a lot of smoke already. I was lucky. I got to the street and I was told not to go any further because of the explosions. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky called it another terror attack on his country. S-300 missiles hit residential areas, regular civilian buildings. There are people under the rubble. Everything is being done to save them. Everything is being done to save the wounded. The city of Bakhmut is just 50 kilometers to the south of Slovyansk and is a site of the heaviest fighting on the Ukrainian front line. But for Ukrainians, attacks on homes like these are a reminder that nowhere is safe. And we're joined now by Frank Ledwich, who served as an officer in the British Royal Naval Reserve and today is a military analyst. Good to have you with us. Uh, let me ask you, what do you make of those strikes on Slovyansk? Because Russia keeps repeating that it does not target civilian sites in Ukraine. Slovyansk and previous strikes elsewhere tell another story, don't they? Well, good morning, Monica. Yes, they certainly do. We can tell something from what President Zelensky said there. The missiles used were S-300, which uh, in this context are repurposed anti-aircraft missiles. <clears throat> they're very imprecise and they're regularly used now on uh, in attacks on, on residential areas. These, are, these were not precise attacks, they're indiscriminate, they're intended to kill civilians. And of course, they form part of a much wider campaign of the Russians in the one sense, of course, attacking civilians through their infrastructure, through their electric, electrical network and so forth, which you've seen over the last year. And of course, certain precision attacks on civilian targets, most significantly and redolently in this case, the almost exactly a year ago attack on Kramatorsk railway station just up the road, uh, 20 kilometers or so from Slovyansk. That was exactly a year ago. Now, this is part of a much greater campaign by Russia against the civilian population with the, in, with the intention of terrorising them. And, of course, Lovyansk is close to Bakhmut, uh, which has seen or still sees some of the heaviest fighting on the Ukrainian front line. Reports now suggest that Ukrainian troops there are under increasingly heavy fire. What more can you tell us about the situation there? Yes, the, uh, over the last week or so, we've seen a, what the British intelligence say is a re-intensification of what's already an intense uh, assault by Russians, particularly in the, with artillery. The Ukrainians are under increasing pressure. What seems to be happening, Monica, is that the Ukrainians are conducting what's called a, a controlled retreat, uh, which they did before on one or two occasions, notably in Severodonetsk last year. When that retreat is complete, we don't know, but they're holding on. What we also see on the part of the Russians is increased or what appears to be increased coordination between the, the Wagner mercenary group and Russian airborne units who seem to be holding the flanks, as it were, of Bakhmut while the, the combination of gangsters and mercenaries that comprise Wagner conduct the, 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 the ground attacks in combination now with very heavy artillery. So right now the Ukrainians are holding on. Let's see how long they can do so. This has become something, of course, of a hero city for them. 
but let's see what happens over the next week or two as this attack intensifies even further. Well, thank you so much, Frank Ledwich, military analyst. Thank you so much for sharing all your insights with us. Thank you, ma'am.